Our speaker this morning is Noah Mazelag. Noah is a five-year boy student from Rock Hall, Maryland. He's a member of the Varsity Boys Lacrosse team, president of the fishing club, and the proud mother of Ellie Mazelag. Today is also his birthday. Noah? Thank you, Greg. Good morning. For those of you who have little to no understanding of the Chesapeake Bay, it is the third largest estuary in the world, covering 4,480 square miles with 11,684 miles of shoreline. Located south of here in Maryland, Virginia, it is referred to as the Bay and can also be found on my top. And I'll be calling it the Bay mostly today. For those of you who, have any, who do have any understanding of the mighty Chesapeake Bay, think for a second, what is it known for? If you said crabs, you're wrong. I'm gonna let you know a little secret. The majority of the Chesapeake Bay blue crabs you eat in Maryland are not actually from the bay, unless you buy straight from a local waterway. Most of the crabs labeled as Maryland blue crabs are from North Carolina, Louisiana, and Texas. Sorry to burst your bubble. When my father and I don't catch our crabs, this catch the crabs ourselves, we buy them from a local waterman he met at the only gas station in Rock Hall. Shout out Shorestone. One of my earliest memories in life has me standing on the edge of our L-shaped wooden dock, looking down at green, brackish water. Brackish meaning a mixture of fresh and salt water. Our dock usually has four large crab pots tied off on the pilings at the end of the L. As I'm standing there, not much older than six or seven, my dad checks one of the pots. The river slime coated line pulls the muddy pot off the bottom and onto the dock. We move the crabs into the live box and rebate the pot. My dad throws the pot back in the water, but unknown to him, the line had become wrapped around my leg, and so the pot pulled me in with it. I was engulfed with green, murky water, and soon untangled myself and rose back to the surface. Not a big deal. That moment is when I first gained respect for the water, and it prompted my lifelong intrigue into what the bay is, but more importantly, what it was. I'm going, to share with you, I'm going to share with you a quote from Captain John Smith in 1608, taken from his journal regarding the Chesapeake and his exploration. There is but one entrance by sea in this county, and that is at the mouth of a very godly bay, 18 or 20 miles broad. Within is a country that may have the prerogative over the most pleasant place ever known for large and pleasant navigable rivers. Heaven and earth never agreed better to frame a place for man's habitation, were it fully manured and inhabited by industrious people. Here are mountains, hills, plains, valleys, rivers, and brooks, all running into a fair bed, compassed but for the mouth with fruitful and delightsome land. Captain John Smith, service 1608. At the time of his first exploration and first navigation, the bay was so full of oysters that they could filter its 18 trillion gallons of water in just three or four days. This meant the water was clearer than any water we can imagine these days. These oysters were so prolific that they created mounds that would rise out of the water at low tides and cause shoals that served as genuine navigational hazards. And this isn't anywhere from 10 to 70 foot waters. Oysters are an integral part in some aquatic ecosystems. A single oyster can filter 15, 50 sorry, gallons of water a day. They play a similar role to trees in that the processes create positive effects for other members of their ecosystem. Oyster reefs also provide necessary structure and habitat for many fish and crustaceans. Humans also discovered that you can eat them. Imagine how that interaction must have gone when the first person to eat an oyster told the others that you can eat this thing. <laughs> well, people caught on, the oyster industry grew, and it is responsible for millions of dollars of contribution to the region's economy. Along with oysters, the bay is home of horseshoe crabs, which serve to be beneficial in many ways as well. Sometimes referred to as God's perfect creation, horseshoe crabs predate the dinosaurs and have not gone, undergone any significant form of evolution for an estimated 445 million years. Their blue blood contains an enzyme that biomedical companies use to test medicines and vaccines for endotoxins, which determines if a medical equipment is safe. Another example of the importance of horseshoe crabs can be found in the sand on the famous Delaware beaches. Horseshoe crab eggs serve as a primary source, uh, source of food for many shorebirds looking to stock up on protein for the migration south. 
Although vastly different from the functions and contributions of the oyster, the ocean crab shares the same ecosystem and benefits said ecosystem in more ways than it can know. One last member of the Chesapeake Bay ecosystem I'd like to mention is the osprey. With a wingspan of up to six feet, this predatory bird soars high above the water in search of fish, which make up 99% of their diet. If you're lucky, you'll see one descend towards the surface of the river and snatch up a fish with its wave and shrub talons. Once a fish is in the firm grasp of an osprey, there's not much hope left. Using sticks, twigs, and anything else they can find, these birds often can be seen creating the nests on pilings and shell harbors out in the rivers. They're unique, though, in that they love to create their nests in the most inconvenient places possible. We've discovered them making their nests in the cabin of a boat on top of highway signs, and there's even a televised osprey nest on top of the Annapolis Mall. Regardless, these birds are fierce predators and wreak havoc on the fish that find themselves on the wrong end of their ruthless talents. While very different, the osprey, the ocean crab, and the oyster all share the same ecosystem. Often, they won't even interact with each other, but they're all there. And yet the balance of this ecosystem depends on the diversity and differences of these three creatures. All three are crucial to the success of the Delmarva ecosystem in many ways. The word Delmarva, when talking about the Delmarva Peninsula, refers to the three states that the peninsula encompasses. Del, Boer, Mar, Maryland, and Bo, Virginia, Delmarva. The peninsula encapsulates Delaware, the eastern shore counties of Maryland, and Virginia's two eastern shore counties, Accomack County and Northampton. Stretching approximately 170 to 180 miles in length, the peninsula provides home to countless walks of life, including just under 1.5 million humans. These people share the greatest ecosystem in the world. An ecosystem is defined as follows a biological community of interactive organisms and a physical environment. The Delmar Peninsula contains one of the most intricate and delicate ecosystems in the nation. I have strong opinions about ecosystems as well. Your contributions, impacts, and solutions all matter. These contributions range in size and magnitude, but yet all create impacts, both positive and negative. With a magnified presence in many ecosystems, humans have the largest responsibility to maintain the precious balance that they were placed into. I often have the opportunity to drive long expanses along the peninsula, which if you have forgotten, is a body of land surrounded by water on three sides. The bodies of water include the Chesapeake Bay on the west, the Delaware Bay on the east, and the Atlantic Ocean to the southeast. As you drive along Route 50, adequately named Ocean Gateway, you get a sense of the nature of the landscape. There are road signs along the way that depict yellow blossoms. These signs say, Chesapeake Country Scenic Byway. <coughs> if you ever find yourself on Eastern Shore Island, don't neglect to look out your windows. The area is topographically flat, However, the pine trees and corn stalks tower well above the sides of our woods. Every now and then, when we drive over counter houses, a few derelicts, but most are kept. Then back to the yellow tassels of the corn in the summer, swaying as hard as it died. In the fall, you begin to see this Canada geese fill the sky, and there's very few out there, adequately dubbed the honkers for their clucks as they argue amongst one another all the time. The beauty of ecosystems and many things are the small details. As you continue on Ocean Gateway, you notice there's no trash on the sides of the roads. This is out of the genuine respect people have for their ecosystem. This respect is instilled at a very young age in my own ecosystem. This is part of what I'm talking about of having a presence over your ecosystem. My summer job is teaching children how to sail. We start our week talking about safety, the do's and don'ts, and how to have a great sailing experience. On that first day, we talk about the rules of the camp. However, our rules don't start with the word rule, but rather the word respect. We call it the four R's. R stands for respect. Number one, respect each other. Number two, respect the instructors. That's my favorite one. Number three, respect yourself. And number four, respect the equipment. The equipment is self-explanatory though. Don't ram the boats. Be careful with the near 25 to 30 year old equipment and respect water and land we use. You can consider the water and the land we use here at camp as the equipment. That's a, question I get, I, that's a question I get asked all the time. I learned to sail under the same trees I now need to teach children on Without two decades worth of respect for our natural equipment, I would not have that opportunity. We like to instill that genuine care for our ecosystem into the kids who come through our camp so that they pass along to their acquaintances as well. 
the beautiful thing about ecosystems is that, is that they are everywhere all the time. They come in all different sizes, shapes, and forms. For example, everyone here is a part of the hill ecosystem. I'm an outsider to the Wendell ecosystem this year, but I am in the upper school ecosystem. I miss you both for this. Think about your individual ecosystems. These can be your hill, where you're from, where you live, or even organizations you're involved in. My point is no matter how hard you try, you will always be a member of some ecosystem. This comes with a price of admission, however. Contribution is necessary. It's like a club minimum, but don't think about it that way. The contributions and involvement shouldn't be forced, nor should they be unenjoyable. Every member of an ecosystem contributes in some shape or form. Symbiotic or not, the connection is there. You should now be thinking about how all your small details, actions, and choices impact the bigger picture. How do you impact your warm ecosystem? Compare yourself to a feature in any basic ecosystem. What do they do to contribute and take away from the ecosystem? How are you in a similar different? Our lives can be connected to any ecosystem because we are natural beings. That's the beauty of it. Humans enjoy being in inviting ecosystems, which is why it's imperative we do our part to maintain a welcoming ecosystem here. One of the main concerns to our ecosystem on the bay is invasive species. There's legislation in place that makes it unlawful to pull your boat out of the water in one place with submerged aquatic vegetation, SABs, on your trailer or haul and then launch out of ramp or another river. This action is how invasive vegetation spreads and wreaks havoc on the natural life. Invasive species have no natural predators, therefore they, re they reproduce and grow at will and often rapidly. They create competition over food for native species, competition over habitat, and competition over spawn. In the northern part of the eastern shore on the Chester and Sasquatch River, for example, snakehead have infiltrated the freshwater areas and impose a serious threat to native predatory fish. Small amphibians as well, reptiles, and some larvae, and other members of the Kane County ecosystem. If you happen to catch a snakehead, you are by law required to kill it on site. This is how dangerous they are to the balance of the experience. Now think about the hill ecosystem for a second. Ideally, everyone is an oyster, helping to clean, restore, and bolster the integral structure of our community. But sometimes a few small choices or decisions could have the impact on the ecosystem, like how a snakehead would impact a pond. Invasive aquatic vegetation spreads like wildfire, like how rumors can spread. Everything is comparable. It is important to keep yourself in mind with this comparison because it serves as a good reminder to be monitoring your actions, decisions, and choices, which all affect others in the ecosystem. The hill ecosystem is some, something everyone should be proud to be a part of. You should be proud of being the hill ecosystem because every person is heard when you speak. People in our ecosystem care about each other. I have the experience to say that given this would be my fifth year as a student. Your teachers live in the ecosystem of your children and they care about it for the sake of themselves and their children. They want their children to grow up in a vibrant, welcoming ecosystem. This is only possible for students who make up the population also care about the shared ecosystem. You'll have a bad experience here if you constantly resent your presence. After graduating last year with my entire grade, there have been plenty of times here this year where I wish I wasn't here. If I kept that mentality, I would have a horrible postgraduate year. I quickly learned that engaging in what the Hill ecosystem has to offer is what makes this experience so enjoyable. Engage in school spirit, engage in pop up activities, and even engage in classes just a little bit more. Demonstrate that you care for this ecosystem, and I promise you, you will enjoy your time here so much more. Caring is more than just living your life for It's more than just progressing through the things that today on the day. It is actively living to better the situation beyond yourself and others. This means engaging whenever possible. This means watching your mouth and children when you drive. This means being respectful of the selection of employees. There are so many little ways to show that you care about your ecosystem. Lucky for us, we do not soar above the water in search of fish for food. Some of you might say that the walk to the dining hall in the winter is similar to that, but we can agree to disagree there. Regardless, demonstrating respect towards those who prepare and serve you food is an aspect of our ecosystem. I've observed decline in my use of it. I request that everyone make a better effort to respect your selection of employees just a bit more. Take the time to learn their names, and when saying thank you, use those names. This is one way I wish to see our ecosystem improve, and the beauty is, that improvement starts with you. 
Could one oyster filter the entire Chesapeake Bay? No. But it only takes one oyster to provide the space needed for another oyster to grow. They often grow literally on top of one another to the point where in 1608, they literally form mountains under the water exposed only at low tide. Be the oyster that allows someone else to grow. Be the oyster that supports their ecosystem regardless of how the ecosystem treats it. Oysters filter the water regardless of how humans have tarnished that water's quality over the years. Let me remind you, an ecosystem is defined as follows. A biological community of interactive organisms and their physical environment. We are all members of the Hill ecosystem. Its success thrives on our contributions. I interact with the Chesapeake Bay ecosystem, the Rock Hall ecosystem, and the Mac 4 ecosystem. Regardless of size, Ecosystems need you, and you need your ecosystems more than you may realize. Take a moment to think about all the ecosystems you've played a role in. These ecosystems are unique to everyone in this room. Think about how you can interact with these ecosystems. What are you doing to better the ecosystem for everybody? How are you connecting with those who exist in your ecosystem? How do your choices impact others? Be the oyster. Thank you.